thank you everybody so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Um, at this time, I'm going to close the poll. Thank you for participating. My name is Lindsay Harmon. I'm the marketing manager at Collective Sun, and I am so happy to have you here. Um, this is a special presentation talking about the Sun for All Solar Fund featuring both BeQuest Foundation and San Diego Habitat for Humanity. Thank you so much for being here. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to our speakers. We have Lee Barkin, Chief Community Officer at Collective Sun, Kathleen Mead, Philanthropic Advisor for BeQuest Foundation, and Karen Begin, or Begin, yep, yeah, sorry, Chief Development Officer at San Diego Habitat for Humanity. Thank you all for joining us. A quick overview of our agenda for today. Quickly, we'll go over who is BeQuest Foundation, who Collective Sun is, and how they work together with the Sun for All Solar Fund. We'll be going over in detail what the Sol Sun for All Solar Fund is and how we can help your organization go solar. Then San Diego Habitat for Humanity will be sharing their solar journey with the Sun for All Solar Fund. And at that time, at the end of the presentation, we'll have a quick Q&A. Um, so please make sure that you Im input any of your questions into the Q&A uh, in the Zoom. So we will definitely get to those. Any questions that we don't get to, we'll definitely be following up with you um, after the webinar. But we should have more than enough time. So thank you so much. At this time, I'm gonna pass it over to Kathleen Mead, who will be going over who Bequest Foundation is. Good, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Kathleen Mead, and I am with the Bequest Foundation. Um, the Bequest Foundation was founded about three, three and a half years ago, and our primary goal is to fight the climate crisis through partnerships and funding of projects for or, with organizations that are also interested, that are like-minded and also interested in fighting the climate crisis. That doesn't mean that that has to be your primary mission or purpose. What it does mean is that as part of your mission or purpose, whether that is a social purpose aimed at helping the overall health and well-being of a community or um, focused on youth development, or other mission, that part of what you want to do is to ensure that you are doing your part to care for the environment in which you operate and the planet writ large. So um, we suspect that all of you are like-minded because you're with us here today. Um, we have several programs that we focus on. Um, our Sun for All Solar Fund, which you're going to learn about today. Yigby, which is Yes in God's Backyard, which is essentially um, putting up um, affordable housing and housing units for the currently homeless or for those at risk of becoming homeless in um, parking lots of churches and other places of worship. We also have an EV loan program where we are trying to help communities get um, residents of low and mid income into electric vehicles. We've done that predominantly by first putting in electric charging stations in, in um, these communities. And then we follow that with education and information about EV and then provide low loan program that offers these loans at low interest rates. And then of course, we recognize that all of this work has to be done with some amount of advocacy work in the community. In order for us to check affect change, we need to do so at, on the ground, but also with all of the political parties um, that recognize that it's important for us to care for our planet. Next slide, please. Bequest Foundation is bullish on impact investing. Many of you know about um, philanthropic efforts from individual or from um, endowments, but few people know about impact investing, which is another form 
of making gifts at, to the community. Um, those gifts though are returned um, and paid back over time. Grants are, are gifts of money that are not returned. Impact investing is returned. Usually when we work with nonprofits, those come in the form of either no or low interest loans. And we'll talk about that again later. Um, however, what we try to do is to ensure that we have a double or a triple impact bottom line, which means that the purpose of the loan is meeting the goals of the nonprofit and bequest in this particular case today, that we're re reducing our, um, our dependence on fossil fuels. And at times the triple bottom line will also impact not only the organization like the nonprofit, but the community that it serves. This enables us to preserve grant monies for projects that cannot be funded through impact investing. Impact investing enables us to recycle our funds so that as those funds are returned, we can use them again and again in the community. Next slide, please. Lee, I'm going to hand it over to you. Thanks, Kathleen. And I'm going to talk a little bit about Collective Sun. Uh, next slide, please. So Collective Sun is a solar financing company that works exclusively with nonprofit organizations and tax-exempt organizations to help them fund and build their solar projects. We've done over 160 projects across 20 different states, north of $60 million in project value, and extremely active in the nonprofit and solar uh, sphere. What we've learned from working with nonprofits is that nonprofits are solar champions. They are amazingly adept at understanding and appreciating the important role that they play in being good stewards of the environment. And they also understand the financial benefits of you know, being uh, reducing an operating expense and putting solar on their rooftop. So, so they are amazing partners and excellent uh, community resources, not just for the missions that they do, which are incredible across the country, uh, but for the example that they set uh, across the country for others as well. Uh, next slide, please. What else, what else we've learned from working exclusively with nonprofits is that they, they have a lot of similar challenges, how to pay for projects and how to get projects done. And so the Sun for All Solar Fund was created in partnership with the Bequest Foundation and other impact investors to really tackle some of these challenges that nonprofits were having in figuring out how to pay for projects and how to get projects built. Uh, next slide, please. So let, let's talk about those a little bit on the how to pay for projects. If you're a nonprofit, you're probably already familiar with uh, the environment we find ourselves in where you typically don't have funds laying around, uh, just earmarked for solar projects. And to go out and find financing is incredibly complicated and challenging because traditional lenders just aren't really set up to serve nonprofit organizations and appreciate the unique uh, advantages and true assets that they have in what they do for our communities. And so finding those dollars is a, is a challenge. And you know the other uh, challenge is that these are construction projects. They're very involved, they're complex. Uh, oftentimes, one or two board members have, uh, or, or you know, staff or committee members have put solar on the roof at home. And this is different. This is a big commercial solar project. It's it is involved, and having that expertise, that knowledge, that skill set to uh, you know manage that process, uh, you know, is, is a big challenge. And this is where Collective Sun and the Sun for All Solar Fund really stand up and support this process. Uh, and let's get into a little more detail about how that works. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so on the how to fund these projects, there's really two components that you wanna keep in mind for, for financing these projects. There's going to be a tax component. Now, I know we think we're a nonprofit and therefore we don't pay taxes and you're correct, you know, federal income taxes, but there are tax benefits associated with these projects that Collective Sun has figured out how to monetize and bring to these projects to lower their total cost. Now today, uh, you know, we're, we're in, in October and uh, if you're watching this web archive, uh, <laughs> there are outcomes from the, rec uh, the reconciliation bill that are happening in Congress, which hopefully we will know by now, but today 
There are some unknowns about how this is going to work in 2022, uh, but regardless of what those outcomes are, there's going to be a tax component and Collective Sun is going to work with you to figure out and maximize what those benefits are. So in this example, we're using a 12% you know, example, it might be 15, it might be 30, there could be some different numbers that get plugged in there depending on how policy changes, but there will be a tax piece and there will be some portion left over. So let's talk about those. In a hypothetical, oh, back up one more slide, please. Uh, a hypothetical uh, $500,000 project, let's say there's a 12% uh, tax benefit, there's still $440,000 left over. The Sun for All Solar Fund, after applying you know, tax benefits, whatever that component is, is going to loan the remainder of that obligation. So in this case, that other $440,000 is going to come in the form of a 10-year loan at 3.5%. And if you do the math, then that amounts to a $52,000 a year uh, loan obligation. Now we can go to the next slide, please. And so following that example, you know, if you have this obligation of a $52,000 a year uh, debt payment, those utility savings had better be bigger. And that is a priority of this program. Savings from day one is a hallmark, a cornerstone of the Sun for All Solar Fund. Uh, so in this example, uh, hypothetical example with $57,000 of uh, utility savings from putting in the solar project, and $52,000 of loan payments, that's gonna have a net savings. And that number you know, may, may be small at the start, but if you look at this diagram on the right, there's a couple things that should jump out at you. One is there's that big jump at the end of year 10. The reason you see that is because the loan eventually at the end of 10 years is paid off. And then you're just getting free solar power for a decade or two to come. So there is a significant long-term benefit. We sometimes call this the uh, solar endowment uh, because it becomes the gift that keeps on giving. The other thing you might notice is that there's slow incremental savings. And the reason that's there is because you locked in the loan cost, essentially a commodity cost for electricity, and that doesn't change. But without solar, utility rates are constantly going up. So you're shielding the organization by locking in these savings, which keep growing over time. So the, the key metric on this uh, slide to look at is really the lifetime savings. We use a 25 year life when we talk about solar projects, but that's because it's the warranty life. We're a little conservative and we you know, make those estimates, but obviously the solar panels are going to last longer. It might be another 10 years, it might be further, but we're, we're just gonna hone in on a 25 year number to look at those lifetime savings. Uh, next slide, please. So the Sun for All Solar Fund is a combination of a technical review and a feasibility study, the tax benefit in one form or another, and the remainder finance at a 10 year, three and a half percent interest rate. These pieces together are what combined make the Sun for All Solar Fund so attractive. Next slide. And, and this is the, but wait, there's more. Uh, and pay attention to the fine print uh, and the details. Uh, the loan itself has a built-in interest and payment holiday until the project's fully constructed and generating power. There's a reason for that. There are payments that have to be made to the contractor that installs the system. While, those pay, while that system is under construction, you're still paying that utility bill. So we delay all those payments, and there is no interest charge during that period. The Sun for All Solar Fund is actually making a grant to your organization to cover the interest expense during that time period. So when that switch is turned on and the system goes live, it's generating savings, that's when you're going to, uh, not until then, see that loan obligation. Uh, in addition, there's no fees. There aren't origination fees baked in. We're not artificially increasing the cost of the solar system. Uh, there are none of those artificial origination fees, application fees, and so forth. And 
one of the huge benefits, the loan is written on very nonprofit centric and friendly terms. This is not collateralized against other assets of the organization, like some other loans uh, attached to real estate and other kinds of things. Uh, with the Sun for All Solar Fund, there's no collateral requirements uh, beyond just the solar equipment itself. Um, so that, that'll make your uh, treasurer or CFO very happy. Uh, next slide, please. In addition, I, I touched on this technical review, but let's get into that in a little bit uh, more detail. So what we're doing here before the bids are even uh, so, you know, secured from solar installers, we want to understand if this project makes technical sense and if it makes financial sense. So we're going to look at your utility bills and your on-site consumption, energy consumption data, and determine, you know, what is the optimal system size for this roof? And I, I want to emphasize, when I say optimal, it's optimal for the benefit of the nonprofit because, you know, different organizations, a solar installer may look at a roof uh, and see, you know, a big flat open roof and let's put on as many panels as possible. Sometimes that's optimal uh, for the nonprofit, sometimes it's not. And so we're going to look at this through the lens of the best ROI for the nonprofit, determine what is an appropriate layout and design, optimal system sizing, what the max system size we can fit on that rooftop parking lot, uh, you know, hillside so forth would be. And from there, we can project what is the uh, energy projection uh, in terms of kilowatt hours, and then the corresponding savings in terms of dollars that this system uh, is going to entail. Now, remember, we're not the installers. We're performing a uh, feasibility study that's very similar, using very similar tools to what installers will use themselves. But we're doing this to sanity check, if you will, uh, ground truth in some cases, the information that comes out of a robust bidding process that you know happens subsequent to this examination. So the technical review will tell us, you know, does this project make sense? How big of a system uh, is is going to be uh, optimal for for this location, and uh, what kind of savings you know we're we're going to see? So next slide, please. And then. After you know, that information is in place and solar bids are secured and a solar installer has been selected, there's still a lot more that has to happen. So we, we provide this worry-free experience where the nonprofit is getting a project manager to help with the construction process. The, at the end of the construction process, the commissioning, uh, making sure that this got built correctly. This is a lot more than a 20 point Jiffy Lube inspection. This is hundreds of points uh, with pages and pages of documentation to check voltages, to double check uh, equipment that's installed. Uh, and, you know, installers are fantastic. Many installers, we, we love working with uh, some amazing installers across the country. Uh, and by and large, they do very good work. But once in a while, we catch things and we catch installers that. Uh, may have put in the wrong inverter. Uh, we catch installers uh, that may not have completed properly a particular item. And so having this additional check, uh, kind of a, a solar Sherpa, if you will, uh, along for the ride, we, we've been up this mountain uh, many times and we will pack extra oxygen and the tent and, and everything that you need to uh, summit the peak uh, and, and make sure that it gets built and it gets built right. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, a couple of the different projects. So Sun for All Solar Fund started off in a pilot phase uh, over the last uh, two years, year and a half, two years or so. We started off in San Diego. Uh, there's been five and a half, uh, $5.7 million of projects that were uh, built. Uh, we'll talk uh, with, with uh, one of them today, uh, Karen's gonna talk about her experience with uh, Habitat for Humanity, uh, but we're very pleased to announce that we have secured funding for an additional $10 million of projects, and those projects have a, a nationwide uh, scope. Uh, and uh, we are accepting applications now for the current, uh, for the current fund. Uh, next slide, please. In terms of eligibility, so you need to be a 501c3, valid 501c3, 
you have to either have or be able to secure some solar bids. Now, keep in mind, if you're advanced in your journey and you've already gone through a competitive bidding process and selected an installer, that's great. We're not going to make you repeat that exercise. Uh, that This component is in there, you know, for, for good governance, I'm, I'm sure all of you are on very um, uh, good governed nonprofits that require three bids. And, and we're, we're just wanting to ensure that there's, um, you know, good governance in place and that the nonprofit's being protected at the end of the day. So ha having reliable bids and, you know, uh, a, a valid project uh, would be a very important component. We also provide uh, priority to uh, you know, social impact, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a, in a moment, but this isn't just about looking at your financials. There, there's a, a, a depth of uh, underwriting that takes place that is uh, diverse in its perspective on how projects are approved or not approved. So let me tell you a little bit more about those as well uh, on the next slide. There is a independent loan review committee uh, that makes these decisions about project funding. And they're looking at three different things. One of them is the social impact of the nonprofit. What is the work that the nonprofit is doing and how is it benefiting the community? Um, and I'm sure you, you, you tell this story all, all the time and it's a, a very uh, easy, comfortable you know, conversation. And uh, many times it, it is just reviewing the website and uh, you know asking a few questions about uh, some of that social impact. Uh, the financial position is a more traditional financial underwriting. It is you know based on the ability to repay the loan. But the nice thing about the Sun for All Solar Fund is we only want to do projects that save money from day one. So if you're taking a hundred thousand dollar a year utility bill and swapping it out with a ninety thousand dollar a year debt service obligation from this loan that we're providing. Uh, that that is going to significantly enhance the financial position of that nonprofit. And then the last is the solar project economics themselves. Some projects have ideal uh, engineering conditions. There's a southern facing roof. There's a flat roof. Uh, this is an a, you know example in the photo here for one of the Sun for All projects we did at uh, Vista Community Clinic. Uh, there, there are you know there can be complexities in projects and there can be simplicities. Another factor is the dollar per watt rate, which is the bid that is secured from the solar installer. How aggressive is that bid? So we wanna see capital efficiency. And if that capital efficiency is strong in a particular project, that's gonna bode well. But the overall decisions are a blend of these th three criteria, the social impact of the nonprofit, the financial position of the nonprofit, and the project economics it, themselves that we've already reviewed as part of that preliminary assessment. Next slide, please. Okay, and with that, I am delighted to pass the microphone virtually to Karen Begin from San Diego Habitat for Humanity, who is going to tell us all about San Diego Habitat for Humanity, who really needs no introduction, but for, for those folks uh, who may not be as familiar with the organization, we'd love to hear more about what you do and the great work uh, that you, you've accomplished in our communities. Thank you so much, Lee. And I, I believe we have um, several Habitat affiliates from across the country here with us today. So shout out to my fellow Habitat uh, folks out there, um, but really happy with the partnership that we have through Sun for All and with Collective Sun. Um, and that's my dog Java, if you can hear her barking in the background, apologies there. Um, Habitat for Humanity helps people in San Diego and all over the world achieve stability through shelter. Uh, our affiliate here was founded in the late 80s. And since that time, we've built and sold 192 homes and repaired about 215 throughout San Diego County. Uh, on the next slide, uh, you'll see our mission and vision. And uh, we're most known for our new home ownership program. So we partner with families who are earning below 80% of the area median income. And they partner with us and help build and purchase their home at a price that they can afford. So our commitment to them is that they will pay no more than a third of their income on their total housing costs. In addition to that new home ownership program, we do neighborhood revitalization here throughout the county. Uh, geographically, we try to center our repair projects and community enhancement work 
in the neighborhoods where we're building new homes. And we also have a veteran build program where we repair homes for veterans who are earning low incomes all throughout the county. We act as the developer, the general contractor, we initiate and service mortgages, and we offer home buyer counseling. So we're, we're kind of a soup to nuts, affordable housing uh, nonprofit. And if that isn't gonna keep us busy enough, we have restores throughout the county. So we have three um, restores, one in Escondido, one in Kearney Mesa, and one in National City. And these home improvement retail centers accept donations of new and used materials. And then we resell those to the general public. So in, in keeping with our mission, we're helping folks improve the place that they call home with discounted items. Those restores keep thousands of tons of materials out of landfills. So that's one way our um, journey to become a more sustainable organization has happened. And we also try through all of our construction programs and repair programs to be as sustainable as we can. Um, as, as you habitats out there know, and if any of you have been involved in construction or building, it, it often comes to a point where you have to make a difficult decision of, of doing the environmentally sustainable thing or paying a higher cost. And as a nonprofit, that's, that's a difficult choice sometimes, right? So as we were looking to become more sustainable throughout the community, um, we had explored the option of, of solar, um, of applying solar to our, our headquarters in Kearney Mesa. Um, but it was, you know, it was always looked like a very expensive adventure <laughs> and one that none of us knew a lot about. We do install solar on our homes, but we do it through partnership with Grid Alternatives here. They're a great organization that operates. Um, um, throughout San Diego County and beyond. But um, GRID has been the solar installer on our homes for many, many years. So we didn't have a, an opportunity really to apply solar in an affordable way until Sun for All came about. So I do have to reiterate a lot of the things that Lee said here. Um, the grant application process from, you know, from day one, the, the Sun for All process was, was pretty easy for us because of the great team at Collective Sun and Bequest. So the application process was, was not incredibly difficult, um, pretty concise and, and direct. Uh, once we were approved, we really had that support every step of the way. Um, from learning about um, how to interpret the solar bids that we got from, from different installers, from evaluating the financial benefit to our organization. And then even when those loan agreements came to us for signature, the team, the team was there to answer every question that we had and really make sure that we understood everything that was in those documents. Um, were there learnings? Were there hard things? Absolutely. Um, we... We, we joke now, um, you know, we're a construction company, so we should uh, always know that construction costs a little bit more than you expect, and there's always surprises, right? Even we messed that up, you know, it's the, we ended up having to replace um, the roof where, where the solar panels were installed, and that's a huge expense that, that we luckily were uh, able to <laughs> finish and have done. But things like that, I think I would, I would just toss out there as you're evaluating your readiness for this. You know, it is going to be important to check every box and really evaluate every, every step of the process. And the, the Sun for All team and the Collective Sun team is really there to help you do that. I think with that, um, here's a little bit of details about our specific project. And I think that's where Lee's going to jump in to, to walk us through those. Yeah, we wanted to just share a little bit more about the economics. Um, uh, we, we wouldn't be a, a slideshow without some numbers in it, <clears throat> especially uh, as a CPA. Um, the project economics of this uh, installation were, were very strong. And over the lifetime, there was over $1.2 million in projected savings. And even though, you know, first year net of that loan repayment, uh, we were looking at a $13,000 payment. Now, uh, uh, savings, excuse me. Now, keep in mind, this is with no dollars out of pocket, no money up front. So, so this is essentially free savings that are going to occur over this lifetime uh, of this system installed. And the KWH generation um, 
may not mean much. It looks like a big number to you there, but the key is how that translates into environmental impact. Um, and the environmental impact is more than just something you measure on a spreadsheet. You know, we can talk about the number of trees that, you know, the equivalent were planted or uh, cars taken off the road and so forth. But for Habitat for Humanity, Karen, I'm, I, I'm guessing this was a little more uh, visceral that, you know, construction, uh, depending on what part of the country you are in, um, it has an environmental impact. And, and certainly we've seen advances with LEED and the green building certifications and, and other environmentally friendly activities. Um, but how, how I'm curious how, how you went about evaluating and, and interpreting and absorbing like what those environmental impacts are and what they meant for your organization. Yeah, that's, that is a great point. We, it was more than numbers on a spreadsheet. And while so much of what we do is driven by uh, how much we can save or how much money we can put towards our mission, uh, it, it really is about operating from a more responsible place for us. Um, those numbers you see there about, you know, the, the, replacing carbon that's removed by by the trees right we we use so many trees to build homes and you know building homes and and the way we do construction um addresses a great need in the community for affordable housing but there is that toll on the environment and making those hard choices of what kind of lumber are you going to purchase ultimately impacts the home buyer because they're going to have to pay uh, for the for part of the cost of that home, and we're going to have to subsidize it um, through the philanthropic community. So all in all, I mean that that sense of environmental responsibility, our entire organization is thrilled about. You know, I, I mentioned briefly we had looked um, quickly into installing solar when we could, and is it going to make enough of a difference? And it turns out it is. I mean, it, it's it's not just every little bit you can do, but this was one major thing we could do. Um, we're not in a place right now to stop using lumber. Um, we are in a place right now to start using renewable energy. So it, it's fair to say you are already very um, uh, environmentally attuned from a cultural perspective, but as a nonprofit, and I think we hear this a lot from nonprofits we work with, it's not like we can say, let's go green and build fewer homes. Right. <laughs> exactly. But, but if there's a pathway that says, let's go green, let's champion the environment and look at savings, which can build additional housing units or support other activities related to the mission. Is that kind of when it, it, it clicked for you that this is something we can do? Absolutely. Yep. That's exactly right. It, it was an and benefit, not an or. We didn't have to make a choice with this one. Well, we, we love those those win wins uh, certainly, and um, and I guess uh, on the next slide, do we have some pictures of? Uh, so, what are we looking at here, Karen? Well, or you're looking at a beautiful rooftop. new roof, uh, number one, that those solar panels are sitting on. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is our our brand new. I think just signed off on final inspection, almost ready to go. Uh, we're at the place where we're working with. Um, SDG and E, that's our, our uh, utility company here, to get the the, the switch flipped um, and and get this going. So we're very excited at a very exciting uh, point in our solar adventure here. And, and that is certainly the, the thrilling moment. Uh, and congratulations. Thank you. Uh, and so for those folks who are watching uh, on the other side of the journey, uh, maybe you know uh, a year ago or a year and a half ago where, where you were at. Um, what can you share <laughs> to either inspire and or forewarn about uh, you know what's what's in store and you know what what did you wish you knew then uh, that that you know now? Oh man, you know, I think um, to to answer your first question, what can I what what could I say to inspire folks who are thinking about this or who are at the beginning of the journey? I would say absolutely start the conversation by um, getting engaged with the with the Sun for All program if you can. 
um, uh, you know, a, applying for that or, or being part of that, getting that into your um, options, I think, is going to be super helpful because there is just a wealth of knowledge on the team. Um, they've done a ton of projects and they can be super helpful um, from staff all the way up to board level kind of questions that, that you get. Um, what did I wish we, we knew back then? Um, I think, you know, for us, it, timing was perfect. We were in a lucky spot. We had been in our new building for a couple of years. Solar would not have worked at our previous administration slash restore location, um, but it did here. You know, we have a couple of flat roofs from, from these buildings that you can see. So I think, um, you know, timing was perfect. I don't think we hesitated too much once we found out about, um, the potential to apply for this kind of support uh, from the fund. Um, I think, you know, what I, I mentioned briefly before is definitely think about all of the things that construction will impact uh, for your operation. Um, most of Habitat's work happens not at our administrative office, um, but even the parking lot closure um, for, for the time that it had to be closed due to the construction work was impactful in some ways. So, you know, little things, I, I can imagine some of the, um, houses of worship or, or even, um, church administration buildings, um, things like that, where you have a lot of flow of general public, it's, it's going to impact that. So think about that. And then also really have folks look at, um, all the steps of the install installation, right? What, what kind of installation is it going to be? And those, those checks and balances of doing the thorough inspections, even if you're a construction company, <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that kind of helps mitigate those surprises. Outstanding. Uh, okay, I think uh, if we go, that was the last slide. If we want to go to the next slide, we have pictures of what we looked like uh, before the pandemic. Uh, I need to update my my photo, time for some new headshots. Uh, and we'll go into a, a Q&A session uh, with a lot of fantastic questions that have already uh, come in. And I'm going to go back up to the list of questions and just start going through. And Kathleen and Karen, feel free to kind of jump in and, and add color and context to any of these. Uh, the first from Andy about getting a copy of the slides, absolutely. We are going to send out this week uh, the copy of the recording and the slides, and they'll be put up on our website as well. Um, Scott asks about uh, habitat projects for individual homes and if it can be used for residential projects. Um, reach out to us. You know, we typically have a 50 kW minimum size. Uh, a lot of the uh, structuring questions will come down to is this uh, 65 individual homeowners, or is it going to be organized, you know, as like kind of one uh, counterparty, but, but there are interesting solutions and it's certainly worth a conversation about how to make that possible. And if we're not the right fit, we'll help you find uh, somebody who is. Uh, to... I'm going to just, I'm going to just yeah. jump in there and um, do give another shout out to grid alternatives. Karen did that earlier, but if there is a grid alternatives in your community, talk with them because they're really expert at residential installations and can help you with that. So again, just want to tag in on Karen's comment. If um, you're talking more about um, residential installations. Yep. Um, and let's put a copy of that URL in the chat. Um, uh, Matter Lindsay, if you could help us do that uh, for grid alternatives. Uh, Anonymous had a question about uh, policy risk, and and, and yes, absolutely. With um, any kind of solar installation, uh, their, their environments can change, and there can there can be new policy mechanisms put in place. Now, the ones we've seen have affected people going forward. So we're certainly facing that in California today. There are conversations about how the net metering program will change. And we want to protect all the people who have installed solar you know, prior. So Habitat for Humanity, they've gotten their project built. Uh, if you do happen to be in California and you're looking at that, um, I will mention that you do want to get your interconnect application in as soon as possible. Even if the project isn't completed construction, you can still qualify for grandfathering. But please reach out to us with those kind of questions because we stay on top of 
uh, certainly federal policy and and state policies uh, around you know solar and energy in particular, how those are going to affect solar economics. Uh, so so great point there. Uh, George asks about uh, third party ownership. Uh, so we can operate in places that allow third party ownership. Now there are some parts of the country that do not allow what are called power purchase agreements. For example, in Los Angeles County, they're operated in a utility called the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. Our structure will work in LEDWP uh, and it'll work in places that do not allow PPAs as long as they still allow third party ownership of some kind. But keep in mind, this is an evolving space and this may be different in 2022. It may be a third party ownership model. It may not be a third party ownership model, but whatever it is, we're gonna help you figure out how to maximize the tax benefits and then how to fund the rest with a low interest loan. Uh, there's a question from uh, Lou who asks about making non-full cost loan, making up the difference. Yeah, so uh, you certainly don't have a, an obligation to utilize uh, the full amount of the loan. If you wanna pay for part of it, you have some part of it reserves and some part of it you wanna have a loan, that's fine. Uh, if you wanna pay off the loan early, there's no early termination penalty. So, so there's quite a bit of flexibility and you know best, your organization and your CFO and treasurer, they know best where to find the balance between cash reserves and securing loans. The Sun for All Solar Fund loan is a very nonprofit friendly loan. That means there's you know, no collateral requirements. It's not going to uh, impede upon uh, other aspects of your operations. And so you may decide like this is the kind of it's kind of like, uh, you know, the kind of one we want to have as opposed to other kinds with more onerous terms uh, that uh, may not be advantageous for the organization. But you'll make the best decision for what's best for your nonprofit and will support, you know, whatever uh, combination of those two make the most sense for you. Uh, Grace had more of a technical question about design and modeling tools. Uh, we use a variety of tools. We're big fans of energy tool base. Feel free to reach out if you have questions on the technical side about that. Uh, Barbara asks about new construction versus existing buildings. We can certainly do both. Existing buildings have the advantage of a history of energy consumption, but new buildings are going to have to have some kind of energy modeling that have future projections. You're gonna know building envelope and plug load um, and certainly just to get permits, you're gonna have to have a lot of this information. So you can still design a system around a building that doesn't exist. And we've, we've done many of those. Uh, the key consideration is get started early in your design process to be solar ready. Even if you don't go solar now and you do it sometime in the future, get the plumbing in place so that it is solar ready. And those factors are considered as part of the design conversation. What's the orientation of the building? Where are conduits running? Where are obstructions placed on the rooftop uh, with HVAC or other things? Uh, that's one of the learning lessons we've heard from other nonprofits building buildings that if we would have known early on, we could have sort of built it with solar in mind. And that's really key to get that conversation started with your team. Um, projects Henry asked about uh, Georgia and yeah, we'll follow up. Um, remember, it's not just every state that's important, it's the utility. So there's some utilities inside of states that allow third party ownership and some don't. And again, in 2022, that may not be an issue anyway. So please reach out and we'll evaluate for your particular project and your particular geography. Um, there's several questions about, you know, how to get started. Um, certainly reach out at sunforall.com. There's a very simple interest form there that you can fill out. Um, and uh, thank you for that comment, Andy, for, for next steps. Uh, check out the online application. And John asks about Interfaith Power and Light. Yes, big fans of the work Interfaith Power and Light are doing. If you are a house of worship that is contemplating solar, there are very strong conversations that resonate about creation care. 
Uh, you, you don't want the CPA preaching about the theology. We can help you with the finances and our engineering team can help you with the technical details. But if you are in a house of worship, there is a amazing conversation you can have with your congregation about creation care and interfaith power and light is a tremendous resource to have that conversation regardless of your faith tradition, uh, how to engage uh, members, uh, especially uh, younger generations who are incredibly interested uh, in, in this area. Um, let's see, James also has a question about projects uh, in Texas. Yes, we've done projects in, in Texas. It's going to vary based on the utility, uh, whether they're a co-op and allow third-party ownership. Please do reach out so we can help you figure out you know, some of these answers uh, to that quest those questions. Um, let's see, Dale has a question. He's part of a creation care team. He's done some preliminary design work uh, and a 13 to 16 year payback sounds pretty high. Um, so, Look, no matter what the economics are, we're gonna make them better. At the end of the day, uh, by applying tax benefits in one form to lower that principal balance or to lower the amount, our key is we wanna see savings from day one uh, and, and we will help you craft a project uh, to accomplish that goal. Lee, I'm gonna uh, jump in here. Michael had a question about whether Habitat needed to obtain additional grants um, or request discounts from installers in order to make the deal work. And it's a, it's a great follow-up on what you just said. We did not have to get any additional support to make this work um, because of the, the commitment from Collective Sun and Bequest and the Sun for All Fund that this is a savings for the nonprofit from day one. Um, so, so it worked out, they made the deal work. Thank you, awesome. Um... And what other questions do we have here? Okay, so that, that covers that one. And oh, there's some questions about storage. Let's, let's talk about that. Yes, we love storage projects. We wanna do more storage projects. They make a ton of sense in places where there's demand charges or where there are time of use charges because the battery storage can be used for what we call peak shaving to lower the instantaneous load and reduce that demand charge or for load shifting where we're energizing a battery during the day and then discharging it at night or arbitraging expensive times for energy or inexpensive times for energy. So the key for storage is just like the PV, will it save money from day one? What's the cost of that energy system, net of any rebates, what is the tax benefit? And then the remaining principal balance that needs to be financed with a loan at 10 years, three and a half percent, you're gonna have a payment of some sort and those savings better be bigger than you know, that payment. And that makes it a cash flow positive from day one, but we can walk through those economics. We can also support that process you know, to, to discover, identify bids and get it built and built properly. Lee, I'm going to jump in. There was another question about, um, is this only for rooftop mounts? Um, Collective Sun, um, Sun for All, has experience with all kinds of installations. Um, we've done ground mounts, carport mounts, rooftop mounts. We've got the expertise, the experience in all types of mounts and every combination thereof. We've done projects that were a combination of rooftop mounts where there was an obstructed roof. So we went to um, carport mounts for the remainder of the project. So again, if you this question has an open parking lot, come talk to us. Um, we work with installers who have all of this experience. There are a lot of questions today. I'm very impressed with this audience. Um, excellent questions. And Kathleen and Karen, I know you're following along. Are there any that we missed here that you wanted to uh, jump in and, and respond to or any other thoughts or closing comments that I guess you wanted to share? If there are, I guess, any other questions, please send them in, any last call for questions. Um, but Kathleen, any other comments that you wanted to add or share? Um, no, we just want to thank you all for being here today. The best way to start this is to just go to the website sunforall.com, 
put your application in and the it starts with the technical assistance. Let's just talk about your individual project. Um, every project we've done is different. And so we wanna be sure to customize our responses um, and financing towards your needs. So thank you again. Thanks. Karen? And Karen, I, I would be remiss if I, if I didn't ask for someone who's more comfortable with a spreadsheet than a hammer, are, are there opportunities to volunteer on projects and participate? And, and for others who are watching who just think it's really cool what you do in your mission that want to get involved, can you, can you talk a little more about that too? Sure, absolutely. I, I may have left that out of my initial uh, remarks there is that we build a lot with volunteers. So not all of the work is volunteer friendly. Um, we won't have, have volunteers doing uh, installations of plumbing or electrical or things like that. But anything else we build or repair, we, we like to have as many hands as we can touch our mission. It really is um, affordable housing built for the community by the community. Um, so we are grateful um, for, for all of the, the opportunities for being able to, to go solar. I mean, this is huge. So the BeQuest Foundation, uh, Collective Sun, Sun for All, what they do, you know, it, it really makes a, a big difference. Um, happy to answer any questions. If, if any of the nonprofit uh, organization folks out there uh, wanna reach out to me, I know the, the contact information was available. So don't hesitate to do that. And yeah, come swing a hammer. We won't let you install the solar panels, but we will let you help build the houses. Well, we, we so appreciate everything that you do for our communities. And with that, I'm going to pass back to Lindsay for any uh, closing comments and, and wrapping up. Thank you, everybody. Um, thank you all so much for being here. What a wonderful webinar. Um, if there are any additional questions, comments, anything, we'll be following up with you in the next few days, definitely. Thank you so much. And we'll be speaking with you soon. Have a great day.